Hey there folks, welcome or welcome back to Case Files. In today's case, we jump into the life of Sneha Ann Philip. Originally from India, she was born on the 7th of October 1969 in the Indian state of Kerala and then later moved with her family to upstate New York. As she grew older, she graduated from John Hopkins University and then later decided to pursue a career in medicine and enrolled in the Chicago School of Medicine in 1995. During her time there, she met Ron Lieberman, a student a year behind her from Los Angeles, and soon the two began dating. They both got along great and soon fell in love and would often spend their time together. They both were quite creative in their own right as well. Ron had an interest in music and Sneha had an interest in painting. Once they graduated, they decided to move to New York together. In May of 2000, they decided to get married at a small ceremony held in the Dutchess County. Shortly after the marriage, they both then moved to a bigger apartment in Battery Park City a residential area in the Manhattan region of New York. While everything seemed to be going well on the surface, something dark was beginning to veil in her life. Or at least, that's how the police would later describe her life to be. On the 10th of September 2001, Sneha was planning on staying at home, cleaning up the apartment, as she had guests coming over for dinner two nights later. She also had a two-hour online chat with her mother where she mentioned that she was planning to visit the Windows on the World restaurant on top of the nearby North Tower of the World Trade Center where her friend was to be married the next spring. Unfortunately though, the very next day, a tragic incident would change the course of history for not just the couple and their families but the entire world. The tragic incident of the September 11th attacks had taken place and at the time Ron was already at work. Concerned for his wife's safety and well-being, he used his medical credentials to get through security to return to the couple's apartment once his shift was over. When he reached to the apartment, he noticed the window had been left open because of which dust from the collapsed towers had accumulated throughout. He also noticed small footprints of the kittens, but none of any human. Concerned with Sneha not returning home, Ron then quickly tried to report her missing. At the time, the police were caught up with the aftermath of the attacks, and so they seemed unhelpful to Ron. Despite that, Ron decided to conduct his own investigations. Now, according to some reports, and also according to Ron himself, a timeline was structured, and it goes as follows. On the 10th of September, at around 4 p.m., she went to drop off some clothes at a neighborhood dry cleaners, then went to a Century 21 store, where she used the couple's American Express card to buy some stuff. A security camera at the Century 21 store recorded her during the shopping trip. The taped image and the credit card records are the last confirmed records of Sneha's presence anywhere. At first, Ron called up the American Express to inquire about the credit card purchases made by Sneha. He then went to the Century 21 store where she was last seen. A few days later, an employee of the store contacted Ron and mentioned that Sneha in fact was at the store made some purchases, but was not alone, but rather with another woman, possibly of Indian origin. Going through videotaped footage of around three weeks, Ron came across his wife's recording at the court department, but was alone in the footage. He later also hired a private detective named Ken Gallen, who later found pieces of evidence 
two in particular, suggesting that Sneha might have actually returned to the apartment on the morning of the September the 11th. The first one was a call made from the apartment at around 4 p.m. to Ron's cell, and the second was a footage of a woman in the building lobby, though at the time it was difficult for Ron to identify that woman being Sneha. It is said that Sneha was one of the hundreds of people who were reported missing after the tragic September 11th incident. Like all the other families of the missing individuals, Sneha's family too posted flyers all over the city in an effort to find her. Once the police did start an investigation into her disappearance, they soon came up with theories that challenged Sneha's listing as a victim of the September 11th attacks. As the police tried to dig deep into Sneha's life, they soon came across things that no one was prepared for. They first came across her work history and found out about her alcohol-related issues, that she was suspended from her workplace for not going for sessions with a substance abuse counsellor. They had also come across that early in the year, Caprini Medical Center, where she was an intern, had declined to renew her contract due to alcohol issues. Shortly after she was informed of the decision made by the medical board, Sneha went to a local bar with few of her colleagues. Interestingly, the outing had led to Sneha spending a night in jail. The reason being that she had falsely accused a colleague of groping her in the bar. The prosecutor who investigated the case dropped the sexual abuse charge and instead charged Sneha with falsely reporting an incident, a misdemeanor under New York law. He offered to drop the charge if she recanted the original complaint, but she refused and was held overnight pending release. After the incident, Sneha would hang out in gay and lesbian bars across the city. According to the police, she would often meet girls at these bars, which would later lead to them having an intimate time back at Sneha's apartment. The police would also later reveal that Sneha also had an intimate relationship with her brother's girlfriend, and that one time her brother had found them both having sex at his place. As you can imagine, the family didn't take too kindly with the way the case was being handled by the police. They disputed the interpretations of the police and claimed that Sneha's reason for getting fired from the Caprini Medical Center was actually because of her bringing to light about the racism and sexual bias she was facing and not due to her being an alcoholic. Her husband had also clarified that the reason for her going to gay and lesbian bars was because she did not want to be in the same situation like last time. Her brother had also claimed that the report of Sneha and his girlfriend and him catching the both of them was completely false and fabricated and that he never even spoke to the detective who wrote it. According to Ken Gallant, the private investigator, he concluded his investigation with the following. Sneha was at the apartment and found out about the attacks on the Twin Towers. And Sneha, being a physician, could not just sit around and decided to help the victims at the site and unfortunately came to her demise, either within the towers or in the ensuing collapse. Soon after the police investigation was completed in 2003, Ron had filed a court petition to have his wife declared as a victim of the September 11th terror attacks. Ron too believed that due to his wife's professional background in medicine, she would have rushed to the Twin Towers nearby and offered her aid to the victims. Sneha's mother further testified that the day before the tragic incident, she and Sneha had an online conversation where she had mentioned to her about visiting a restaurant at the World Trade Center. 
What's even more interesting is that the author of the police report testified that he too believed that Sneha had probably died in the attacks. Unfortunately, in 2006, Judge Rene Roth ruled that it could not be established that Sneha had in fact died on the September 11th and instead set the date of her legal death at September 10th, 2004, three years after she was reported missing per state law. Naturally, the family did not agree with the verdict and after a long back and forth on the 31st of January 2008, a five-judge panel had reversed Judge Roth's decision after Ron and Sneha's family appealed her verdict. The police report was also dismissed on the grounds of hearsay. Sneha and Philip was later then declared as the 2,751st victim of the Twin Tower collapse. No physical remains have ever been found for over a thousand victims of the attack at the Trade Center, but the family still hopes that they might find something that will lead them to the remains of their daughter. To this day, Ron remains close to Sneha's family, and in fact, in 2010, he remarried with their encouragement. There also have been two memorial funds under Sneha's name, started by her family back in Kerala, India. Well, folks, that was the end of the case file. Hope you did find the video interesting. Until next time, take care of yourselves and your loved ones. And please be safe. Peace.